I am so glad a viewer requested this video topic. For me, Palladium Books began with Eric Wujic's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and Other Strangeness, the direct adaptation of Peter Laird and Kevin Eastman's comics and graphic novels, transformed and greatly enriched into a role-playing game. The story goes, a manuscript for a role-playing game was submitted to Palladium Books by someone, I don't know who, and Eric rewrote the entire thing in only five weeks, which if you have ever attempted to design a role-playing system, particularly one this good, well, it's an astounding feat of creative genius. The game is perfect. The layout is perfect. The art is perfect. It was a sizzling hot title that hit the market running and sold 50,000 copies per year. And then the Mutant Turtles went mainstream. They got a cartoon series on TV. They were no longer cool. Sales plummeted to 12,000 copies per year and Palladium eventually made the decision to drop the license to produce titles using the cartoon characters. A shame, really. And ask anyone who was there for the original comics and the RPG and they'll tell you exactly the same thing. The comics and graphic novels can be divided into all the cool stuff before 1987 and all the shit that came after that. The two are not the same thing, and anyone who says otherwise is a liar or a fool. Now, I admit there have been some redeeming comic titles in the last decade, but we are here to talk about role-playing games, specifically how the Palladium Megaversal rule system handles mutant animals and the bioenergy point by system. So let's get into it. Go grab yourself a tasty beverage. We're about to get deeply nerdy. First off, a basic definition of terms. A point by system is a method used in role playing games to create characters with specific abilities and attributes. In a point by system, players are given a certain number of points that they can spend to purchase different abilities and traits for their character. In the case of mutant animals in the Megaversal rule set, this is called the BioE system and is fairly simple. Each animal is assigned a certain number of biological energy points. If you've watched my earlier videos about the magic and psychic power systems in the rule set, you'll get the idea that this is potential energy, kind of the evolutionary batteries for the animal. A huge creature is not going to have many left. A tiny creature will have a lot, and the way to alter this amount of energy is to trade the creature's size and their evolutionary traits. Mostly the traits that make them more or less similar to a human, or give them special natural abilities that are beyond what humans can do. The idea is to make a player character out of these animals, so their intelligence and abilities to use tools and pass as human is kind of the end goal here. Before we get to the mutation process, first we have to do a little background work on the animal. What sort of animal it is, what the mutation origin story is, and the education they got as they grew to adulthood. In the Palladium system, you can randomly roll all of these various tables throughout the books. It's one of the best aspects of the game because it will result in combinations you might not otherwise have put together yourself and gives the system a lot of replayability, always keeping things fresh. This really deeply influenced the way I approach role-playing gaming for the rest of my life. So a big thank you to Palladium, Eric and Kevin Simbeta for that. The mutation cause can be an accidental encounter with alien industrial waste, strange meteor, magic crystals, that sort of thing. Or the animal may have just been born that way, a naturally occurring freak mutation. After all, every individual is a mutant to one extent or another. That's just what makes us individuals, right? The last option is deliberate experimentation, which can be good, like Captain America, or really bad, like Rocket Raccoon from Guardians of the Galaxy. Someone who spent their early life locked in a cage and only taken out to be subjected to cruel and highly dangerous experiments, resulting in painful and very traumatic physical and mental transformation, are probably going to have a lot of issues with laboratories, medical and scientific instruments, and just humans in general. But even in those cases, some individuals can come through that sort of trauma and as absolute legends. Just the best kind of people because of what they have endured. They have empathy, an indomitable will, and a massive respect for life, liberty, and justice. Heroes or villains can be forged from the same background. You get to decide your course in life. And in role-playing games, we usually represent this by choosing the character's alignment. In Palladium, there's also a pretty robust set of rules, charts, and tables for mental trauma and mental conditions that you don't find in a lot of other role-playing games. So, background sorted, we can get to the biological energy step. The size of the animal is linked to its mass or body weight. This also impacts their intelligence at very small sizes. Under 20 pounds of weight, and they start to get intelligence penalties. This also impacts strength, endurance, speed, 
and how much damage they can take before suffering critical wounds. One chart works for all of the fairly huge number of different animal species covered in the TMNT book and the handful of source books that were printed to expand the options available. From those animals found in urban settings to exotic pets, zoo animals, and in later source books, even humans, which are covered in the pages of Transdimensional TMNT published in 1989. This book also includes rules for mutating dinosaurs and other creatures from prehistory. Now that the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles license is no longer supported by Palladium, we still have the post-apocalyptic world setting called After the Bomb to use as a resource. It's very much Mad Max with mutant animals, road rage, and kind of an alternate future to the Rift's Earth setting, but its lack of spaceships and such is a bit limiting. It's good at what it does, and I'm thankful we still have it in print and in store at PalladiumBooks.com. A large creature like an elephant must reduce its mass to gain bio-e points to spend, and a small creature like a mouse must increase size levels. Each animal will have a stat block which includes its basic description, size level on the growth chart, its length, weight and build, which gives a better indication of what its length means. And then we have how many, if any, bio-e points it starts out with. A mouse will have 80, an elephant will have none. So the mouse is going to spend points to get bigger and smarter, the elephant will spend growth steps on the chart to get smaller and gain 5 points of bioenergy per step to spend on its human features, which include becoming a biped, with hands, who can talk, and looks like a human, more or less. Even with full human features, a mutant animal is always going to look a lot like a mousy or elephanty person, but they will be just on the verge of that uncanny valley weirdness. They may even be quite an attractive person. Oddly enough, their human looks have no impact on their level of physical beauty at all. I have serious doubts a mutant crocodile or hammerhead shark is going to be turning heads. Twisting heads, certainly, but yeah, yikes. If the animal has any human-like features already, such as raccoons automatically having partial human hands, they don't need to spend any bioe points on those. They may also have natural weapons, tooth and claw, and natural powers such as night vision, extremely good sense of smell. They usually need to pay for these, and they certainly will need to pay for any psychic powers and potential superpowers they may have. If you combine the BioE system with the superheroes rules from Heroes Unlimited, you can get actual superpowers. The psionic powers of mutant animals work a bit differently from other player characters. They're a bit more potent and innate to the character, so they do not require inner strength points to use. A mutant who purchases them with BioE points can use their psionics as often as they like. The Heroes Unlimited setting was already in print by the time TMNT came around, so it was always able to slot into that system pretty smoothly. And Heroes Unlimited includes an animal section in their mutant power category, with the animal psionics being their own mini section unique to that subset of mutants in general, which also includes a little list of the BioE cost for specific powers from the general superpowers list that superheroes and villains select from. I swear this is not as complicated when you are making the character because the books are very well indexed and character creation flows very smoothly once you get the general idea and it's all designed around optional random roll tables anyway. In theory, you could run all character creation using a BioE point system if you wanted to. I'm sure someone has and it would fit well with the After the Bomb setting, perhaps also Rift's Lone Star, Scrapers, it's got a very balanced feel to it. Those BioE points have a heavy trade-off. You don't really want to end up with a superhero who is basically a mighty embryo. Well, maybe you do. Who am I to judge? It's quite possible after all. Rocket Raccoon from Guardians of the Galaxy is a perfect example of the sort of anti-hero character you can make very easily with the Palladium Mutant Animal rules. His ability to fabricate high-tech weapons and explosives is exactly what I use the Ninjas and Super Spies special gadgeteer skill training for. All you have to do is trade off some of the educational skill programs you get as part of your mutant animal background origins, and you're good to go. Even his cybernetic implants fit perfectly with the implants available when you add in an occupational character class from the Rift setting and add in alien worlds, spaceships, and cosmic fantasy from Phase World, you're basically playing characters directly from the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Palladium books may not like that you are, but you are. And that, my friends, is how mutant animals in the BioE system works in the Palladium Metaversal rules. My name is AJ Pickett, thanks for listening, and as always, 
I'll be back with more for you very soon.